to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. I'd like you to truly help me honor and celebrate every man, woman of God, uh, men of God who have come across this nation. Hallelujah. I believe in Jesus. I believe in the power of his word. I believe in transformation. I believe that territories can come under the influence of the government of heaven. I also believe in miracles. I believe God can change lives. And tonight, as we begin a series of teachings, I want to encourage you in addition to the marvelous work that has been done. By the way, let's give honor to all the vessels that God has used before this time. Fully honor you, sirs. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible declares that he has not called the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain. I, I have been so honored and touched just knowing the sacrifices that many of you have made. Many of you have traveled from far, traveled from there. I can tell you one thing about God. There is a name that he is called. A rewarder. A rewarder. He rewards. He rewards. Hallelujah. And so may I encourage you before you sit to number one, please pay attention to the teachings because the power of God is derived from his word. And that means that if you pay attention without the word of God, the anointing has no ministry. The assignment of the anointing is to insist that the word of God becomes true in your life. And so if there is no declaration of that which has been spoken, the anointing has no ministry. God only does what he says. He does not just do what you want. He does not just do what is needed. The only way you can get God to do a thing is also to make him say it. Genesis 21 verse 1. Please keep standing. Please keep standing. Genesis, will we have it projected? Please read with me if you are a Christian when you have it projected. Genesis chapter 21 and verse 1. Please just help those under the anointing. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. The only reason why he visited her was not because she was in need. It was because he said it. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. The only way God performs is when he says. Hallelujah. And I want you to also be very sensitive because you see... Graces have their effects when they are allowed to find expression. And, and I don't mean to sound arrogant, sincerely forgive me if I do. But I can tell you one thing for sure, that whilst you are seated listening, it is not only the sound of the word you will be hearing. You will also be hearing sounds of the abundance of rain. 
Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, I don't know why the Holy Spirit is moving me this way, but I'm seeing the number seven before we sit. Listen, the number seven. Please help them. The power of God is coming on them right now as I speak. Seven. For you will never be the same when the presence of Jesus. Just be patient, we'll sit down. This is why you came. You came for a conference. Harus kalabrandi kebara tu siapa benda? What is that mountain that stands before you? In the name of Jesus, for there is a name that has been exalted above every other name, and in the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the Living God, I decree and declare that everything that does not name the name of Christ. It bows to the Lordship of Jesus tonight. Hallelujah. We are going to sit down. But I'm hearing in my spirit restoration. This is, there are people who have lost things through the pandemic. Some of you came here. The Bible says they are taken for a prey. And none say it, restore. It takes a voice to declare restoration. Hallelujah. And I'm seeing the number 21. We may not be able to bring people out here, but I stretch my hands. The power of God is coming. I'm seeing the number 21. You will be amazed at what happens to you tonight. May the grace that brings that which has left you. Karus katebakatoski ata. Kemprekatekata. May that grace come upon you now. Take that grace. Help them please. Take that grace. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Let the, Help them please. Restoration of everything that has been lost. I speak to a man of God here. It looks like the mantle and the grace of God upon your life. You are seeing things go down in life and in ministry. I lend my voice with the man of God and I speak to you. There is hope for a tree. For at the scent of water, parokates kete bakata, embre kete karas kotata, embre katus kete bakata. May your life, your ministry, let it receive restoration in the name of Jesus. Just help those under the anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please sit down if you can. We have to walk with time. And every spirit that is not of the Christ in this place. Hold on. Just hold that lady there. I command that devil, let her go now. In the name of Jesus, I bring you liberty right now. In Jesus' name. You see, the Bible says, Wherefore God had so highly exalted him. South Africa, hear me. Jesus is alive. And for many of you, Jesus is still alive. Amen. Did we greet? Good evening, everybody. So let's get to the word. Again, it's my joy to be here. I, I believe that the Lord sent me here. Thank God for the blessings of relationship. And um, this is not a meeting just for House of Treasures. This is an apostolic and a prophetic conference that is for South Africa is for Africa, for the nations of the earth. Hallelujah. Now, we have a series of sessions, and because of the nature of what we're discussing, the topic, I would like to just 
brief us, if you will, just to help us understand how God is going to be leading us through our discourse. Um, my assignment is to challenge the body of Christ across this territory and to help them to lend my voice and stand in faith with all the servants of God within this territory so that we are able to experience greater levels of the move of God even within this territory in the name of Jesus. And so tonight we will be examining the current state of the church, the body of Christ. It's, it's a spiritual x-ray. We are going to be looking at the body of Christ uh, from a standpoint of love and a passion to see how we can rise to higher spiritual dimensions. If you're with me, say amen. amen. And then we will also be examining in subsequent sessions, I will be teaching on the pathway to stature and maturity. Having identified the body of Christ, it's important for us to understand the spiritual protocol that has been designed by God for the growth, the maturity, and the establishment of the saints. It is important that we be grounded, we be established in truth. And there is a spiritual pathway. In this kingdom, we are not given the privilege of creativity when it has to do with spiritual growth. There is already a defined path. And the Bible says in Jeremiah 6 and verse 16, it says to stand and to ask for that path, even that ancient path. It says when you find it to walk therein and a man can enter his Sabbath, you can find rest when you follow that path. Hallelujah. And then... Hopefully in this conference we'll also be looking at what I call flames of fire. We're now going to be discussing the price for personal and territorial revival. What does it take to bring the power, the grace, the move of God in a life and across territory? The Bible and even modern history is full of awakenings that have happened across territories. And it looks like we are beginning to lose the formula that really, really is able to make God revealed at a territorial dimension. We need to bring territories under the Lordship of the Christ. Are we together? Jesus said in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, He says, You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and He says, You will be witnesses unto me. And he gives you geography. Your witness has geography. Our witness is not random. He tells us we are witnesses. And he begins to list the geographic component of our witness. Ultimately to the ends of the earth. But to Jerusalem, Samaria, Judea, to the uttermost part of the earth. And I hope that he will have the time to discuss a bit on the work of the ministry. This is particularly for men and women of God, those who are called into ministry, that God will grant us grace to sharpen one another here and there, just put dots on the I's and cross the T's and to help bring ourselves to higher levels of accuracy and precision as far as the work of the kingdom is concerned. And of course, in a meeting like this, God will never leave himself without a witness. Therefore, expect outpourings of the Spirit, marvelous healings and miracles like he has begun. Expect such a move of the Spirit in this conference. If you believe everything we are going to be doing, please talk to the Lord in one minute. My heart is open. Send your word. Send your word. Send your word. Hallelujah. Amen. For tonight, can these bones leave? That's my teaching for tonight. Ezekiel 37, please. 
can these bones live? We're examining the mystery behind degeneration, the mystery behind decadence, and the mystery behind restoration. What does it take for a man to go down? And what does it take for a man to be restored? The Bible says the things that are written aforetime, that they are for our learning, so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope. That means that scattered in this Bible are the truths, the principles of the kingdom that help us to learn God, help us to know God. We understand his character. We understand his ways when we examine scripture. Are we together? So Ezekiel chapter 37. This was an encounter that prophet Ezekiel had. This is um, a prophetic picture, if you would want to look at it. That it, was, it was a picture of the current state of the nation of Israel that is also applicable. Remember, we are doing a spiritual anatomy. We want to examine the body of Christ as it is now. What is worth commenting? What is worth addressing? Because until we can look at ourselves in light of what God intends to do, we might not be able to find our way out. When you find a man who is lost and he's trying to look for the direction, the first thing you ask him is, where are you? He has to be able to identify where he or she is. Then you can direct them from that point. You're on your way to House of Treasures, and now you've missed your way. We cannot help you until we find a way of making you aware of where you are. Is that true? So Ezekiel 37, let's hurry up for time. And the hand of the Lord was upon me, and carried me out in the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. And he caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And the prophet said, I am used to seeing things change in the realm of the spirit, but this is a difficult situation. And even as a prophet, I confess, only thou knowest. So now the Bible begins by describing a state. Every bone here was once a human based on that vision. The question is not what happened later on. Forget about that, we're coming there. The real question is what happened that the humans now deteriorated to the point where they became bones. Because if you do not understand why this degeneration happened, any miracle will only be a waste. You have to first correct what happened that necessitated that miracle. Are we learning now? So, he is taken to a valley that is full of dry bones. And bones in scripture, among other things, talk of structure. Structure. When Joseph left a prophecy, he said, make sure my bones are taken. When you are leaving Egypt, take my bones with you. He did not just mean the physical bones. Take the spiritual structure that gave you favor in a harsh land. Don't lose it. There is a formula that I gave you that made you to prevail even in Egypt. When you are leaving, take that structure with you. The structure of the presence of God. The structure of reverence for the things of God. So the first thing that we see here that God was addressing was not life. It was the bones. Let's do something about the bones. The army is a product of the bones. Until the bones came together, there was no need for life. There was no need for flesh. Are we together? Now the truth is that the Bible is full of instances where God would send warnings to his people, attempting to call them back to their first love, attempting to plant in them their long-lost passion. All through scripture, especially when we read through the life 
of the nation of Israel. They were God's covenant people. They were his beloved people. But once and again, you would find out that for some reason, there would be a way, a system of spiritual halotry. They would deviate from the known patterns of God. And when that happened, usually from scripture, they are handed over to their enemies. Is that true? And then when that happens, God would send a prophet and he would call them and most times they would heed to his warning and he would bring them salvation and bring them restoration. So the idea of deviating from the patterns of God, the idea of deviating from God's authorized system, his modus operandi, is not something that is new. It's happened from scripture, it's happened through scripture, through, through history, that a people can be on fire today and for some reason lose it. Our history is full of revivals, the moves of God. You would read, I believe that South Africa has its share of that history. Men and women of God who arose from your soil doing mighty things for God. Many of them have gone to be with the Lord. When you read through Bible, when you read through history across Africa, Europe, US, you would find out that at a particular time in history, there seem to have been certain men and women who came from maybe backgrounds that were not really something to write home about but god used them to do marvelous things some finished well some did not finish well both are lessons for us are we together today we live in very troubling times in africa and across the globe, the church is going through a very prophetic season of transition. There is a lot that is going on. And every nation, um, without exception, has had its share of issues as far as the body of Christ is concerned. I believe it's been the same thing in this region too. That there's been all kinds of shifts, all kinds of things. And this is very important. Jesus himself built his church. And he had so many things to say about the church. Two things Jesus said about the church that is very instructive. Number one, in Matthew chapter 5, we we'll begin our reading from verse 13. Jesus himself is teaching in what we know theologically to be the Beatitudes. Matthew chapter 5, we we'll begin our reading from verse 13. Jesus is teaching now. And he tells them, you are the salt of the earth. Everybody says salt of the earth. Salt of the earth means that you give, you add value and you preserve. That's the assignment of salt. It adds taste and it preserves. That means the decadence in the world is a report card that the church might be failing somewhere. Because the Bible tells us that we are salt. Is that true? You are the salt of the earth. But it says, if the salt has lost its savour, wherein shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Next verse. We're reading to 16. Verse 14, please. It says, ye are the light of the world. That means the definition of darkness is not when power is out. It is the world without the church. God's definition of darkness is not the absence of electricity. It's the world without the church. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. And then he says, neither do men light a lamp. The next verse a candle and put it under a bushel but upon a candlestick and it giveth light to all who are in the house and then he says let your light so shine the word let is the word permit permit your light to so shine not in heaven before men he wants them to see your good works and so glorify your father in heaven so jesus tells us as a church please pay attention that we are light he says, we are salt. When you read Matthew chapter 16, maybe just write it for reference. Matthew 16, from verse 13 down to 19. Matthew 16, 13 down to 19. Jesus began a discussion about his identity. That would be where he would talk 
eventually about the concept of church. Look at how the idea of church started. It started with an identity crisis. The people did not know him. And he says, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? It was a very good question because he, he wondered at the confusion, the people who were close to him. They said, well, we do not know. Some say you are John the Baptist, you are Elijah incarnate, you are one of the prophets, Jeremiah. And he said, okay, who do you say that I, the son of man, is or am? And he was surprised that none of them, even though they were close to him, they really did not know who he was. So proximity does not mean revelation. Just because you are close to scripture, just because you are carrying a Bible, just because you are around Christian activities does not necessarily mean you have an encounter. Peter alone spoke by the Spirit. He said, I know who thou art. Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. And then he says this. He says, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. Then he says, thou art Peter. And upon this rock, what rock? Upon this understanding. I will construct my church based on this understanding. That nothing will be able to work in your life until you first have a revelation of it. This is the formula that I will build my church upon. That means you don't just tell people be free until you have a revelation of the grace supports the revelation. So he says, I will build my church this way. And if you allow my church to function this way, it will be so formidable, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So if the gates of hell seem to be prevailing effortlessly over the church, we must go back and examine our spiritual architecture. There is something we have lost. Now, re re remember that a conference like this is not about pointing fingers. A conference like this is about a corporate examination. Are we together now? I have to say that. It is true that the state of any territory is largely a reflection of the kind and the quality of believers within that territory. Please take note. The state of any territory, any nation, any region is largely a reflection of the kind and the quality of believers within that territory. This is very true. Every time a nation was in decadence, every time a territory was in decadence, God's first port of call was the believers or his covenant people. God addressed the nation by addressing the church. You have to pay attention to this. This is very important. Every time a territory or a nation begins to plunge through some sort of decadence, when God comes to solve the problem, truly speaking, He does not go to government, He does not go to royalties, He comes straight to the church and says, What is going on? Church, I kept you here and mandated you with an assignment. Are we together now? This is very important. All across Africa, like I said, and all across Europe, the US, we know that things are happening economically, things are happening politically like we've never seen before. And I can tell you this, the church has a role to play. The church needs to give the world an explanation. As to why we have allowed darkness to move as though the reality of the finished work of Jesus were a lie. Are we together now? So, Ezekiel is caught up in the spirit and he's shown a vision. And it's a vision of a once great army. That had now become bones. And the interesting thing is that the bones were so disjointed. You would look at the valley and almost not see the bones. But all of them were there. What scattered them so much? Because under a certain condition, those bones can come again. So every bone that was scattered was still there. Out of sight. But not beyond reach. There was a condition that was initiated. And the Bible says the bones began to come again. 
And at the end of it, here was an exceeding great army standing. For tonight, I want to I want us to walk together as the body of Christ over South Africa and over Africa generally and then across the world. Let's walk together as I identify three major factors. Please write this down. Three major factors that I believe have affected the quality of believers. The quality of the spiritual products that have come out of our churches, out of our assemblies, out of our spiritual platforms. And remember, I teach as one who is the son of the soil. I am an African myself. And so I teach from a standpoint of love. I teach as one who is a co-laborer. Are we together now? I have only come to strengthen the hand of the body of Christ that together we rise to the next level that God has destined for us. But we must pay attention and we must be honest. Listen to me. What you are about to learn tonight for many of you is a confirmation of what the Spirit has been showing you. For many of you it may be a correction of your approach to life and ministry and even spirituality. But for all of us together there are things to learn. So that our children and our children's children will be able to preserve the power, the grace and the potency of the name of the Lord. Are we still together? So let's continue. Three factors that have affected our territories haven't agreed that the quality, the quality of the believers within a territory defines in large proportion the quality of that territory. Economically speaking, politically speaking, etc. Number one. What is the first problem? What is the first issue? What is the first factor that has affected the quality of believers in today's church? Number one, the first real factor is that most believers or most people, most church people, if I would use that expression, they have no genuine encounter with God. Now, I, I, this, this, I, I, let me apologize in advance. Don't feel bad when these things, you just accept it as God trying to help you. Because those he loves, he chastises. Are we together now? The absence of genuine encounter with God from the pulpit to the pew is a major problem. For as long as we do not have a genuine encounter with God, the products that come out of that aberrated Christian experience cannot be potent enough to host God within a territory. Please pay attention. The plane is only preparing to lift. No genuine encounters with God. You see, the spiritual protocol, look up please. The spiritual protocol is every time God calls you, He does not send you. Your first assignment is not to go and work for Him. Every time He calls you, the formula is follow me. I am your object, not ministry, not business, not church. When God calls you, He says follow me. When He makes you, then He sends you. Just because you are called does not mean you are sent. Please sit down. Pay attention. Come, follow me. Follow me. Your calling is not to a pulpit. Your calling is not to a marketplace. Believe me. Your calling is not to politics. Your calling is to Jesus. What you call pulpit, marketplace, politics is just the geography of your weakness. After you have effectively fulfilled your calling... The absence of a genuine encounter with Jesus is what has produced the plethora of issues that we have first from the pulpit and then across membership and then by extension to society. When God called Moses, when you read Exodus chapter 3, Exodus 33, you read all these scriptures, they tell you that when Moses, he saw a bush that was burning, 
and would not be consumed. Here's what he says. I will turn aside and see this great sight. When God saw that he had turned aside, he said, Moses, take off your shoes from where you stand this holy ground. And a discourse began. And at the end of it, God said, now you are crying for a revelation of me. I am that I am. Know me first before you go and stand before Pharaoh. Because Pharaoh will ask you who sent you. Are we blessed? Listen to me. It is important that we have genuine encounters with God. Isaiah chapter 29 and verse 13. Let's hurry up for time. Isaiah chapter 29 and verse 13. Repeated also in Matthew chapter 15 and verse 8. Isaiah 29 and 13. Any of them, please just give it to us media. So that we can make progress. He says, wherefore, the Lord said, for as much as these people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do, do honor me, but have removed their hearts far from me and their fear towards me is taught by the precepts of men. In other words, they draw near with their mouth, but in, in reality, their hearts are far from me in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12 oh once again dear South Africa Africa and the globe let's reintroduce Jesus that the foundation of the believers experience is not miracles it's not signs it's not wonders it's not the prophetic it's not the apostolic it's not even revelation the foundation is Jesus hear me the formula for any life that must excel is that in the beginning God if it becomes in the beginning fame in the beginning ministry in the beginning a desire for signs and wonders you have corrupted the formula God cannot be Omega until he's allowed to be Alpha don't allow something else to be Alpha and then ask him to come and finish what you started. He only finishes what he started. He is only Omega over what he was Alpha over. Please pay attention. Genuine encounters with God. Can I tell you this? There is a way that when you encounter God, you will love him more than preaching. You will love him more than business. You will love him more than politics. Genuine encounter with God. One of the pillars that can allow men host God at a territorial level. Genuine encounter. Many believers today, I tell you sincerely, many people in church cannot exactly tell if they are saved or not when we started with god in fact we were made to write dates when we gave our lives to christ i don't know is there someone here who remembers you can't arbitrarily hope you are saved wish you were saved imagine that you are saved if you are saved you are saved if you are not saved and there is a spiritual formula we are not left to guess whether you are saved no there is a formula the Bible says in Acts chapter 4, please give us Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. Body of Christ, let's look at this and remind ourselves. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. You cannot say you are saved. When you have not encountered Jesus. It's not Jesus and a group of delegates that save you. No. When it has to do with salvation, there are no delegates. It is Jesus or Jesus alone. If you have met and routed through any other person that you gave your life to, according to the authority of scripture, you are not saved. Romans chapter 10. From verse 8 to 10. The absence of a genuine encounter with Jesus. 
is one of the first reasons why we have this level of decadence that is in the similitude of Ezekiel's vision. What saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. Verse 9. It says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Can I be honest with you? It is not everything you believe about Jesus that equals salvation. There are specific things you have to believe about Jesus to be saved. Believing Jesus is a good man does not save you. Believing Jesus is a founder of an honorable religion does not save you. There are specific details about Jesus. You must believe in him crucified. You must believe he died. You must believe he rose again for our justification. You must believe today he is seated at the right hand of the Father. If you do not believe this, you are not a Christian. It's as honest and sincere as that. We may differ, denominationally speaking, across different schools of thought. We may differ um, across several things, I understand. But it is in this one thing that we cannot allow ourselves to differ. Because if we lose the revelation of this, there is no Christianity again. Here and there we may argue, we may disagree with one another across certain doctrinal issues. That's all right. But on this one thing, anyone who names the name of Christ must agree that this is the formula for salvation. If thou shalt confess with your mouth the lordship of Jesus and then believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, the Bible declares thou shalt be saved. Even if you fall down under the anointing and stand up and you don't confess this, you are not saved. You had a powerful service, but you are not saved. Can I be sincere with you? It's important we have to be sure of the admission process again. How there are all kinds of inventions as to this Jesus thing. And while we are a people of love, it is important that we preserve the destiny of a generation by reminding us again that everything starts with Jesus. More than preacher, more than apostle Joshua Selman. Jesus, Jesus. Listen, keep quiet and listen carefully. Jesus. Jesus be the center of your church. Jesus be the center of your church From beginning to the end It will always be, it's always been you, Jesus Oh, Jesus So from my heart to the heavens Jesus be the center it's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. Listen to me. The more you know God, I tell you the truth, the more you will not even want to be the one seen. The formula is that I may decrease so that you will increase. The obsession to be known is proof we have not encountered the God of the Bible. Believe me when I tell you this. Listen. Many of you here are medical doctors. There is a way you look at a patient and certain attributes in that patient show the deficiency of certain vitamins. You can look at the patient and know immediately with pin drop accuracy that this patient lacks vitamin C. There is a way an individual can behave. You can know immediately that there are things that are not in place. An obsession to be known. It doesn't matter who is pushed away. No. When you know Jesus and you love him, it is an honor to represent him. Whether in ministry, whether in business. Can I be honest with you? 
the dominion that we have in this kingdom is not absolute dominion. We, our dominion is shared dominion. You want to understand how shared dominion works? Look at the moon and the sun. The moon does not have any light of its own, but it still glows. It glows to the degree to which it aligns to the sun. None of us have any power of our own, grace of our own. Everything we have is derived from what we have received. And let me tell you this. Everybody, and I encourage preachers, we must be unashamed to let the world know how helpless we are without Him. It is good that people honor us. It is good that people bless us. But please, for God's sake, let them know that Jesus is the one who is Lord. To see you high and lifted up You are shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Listen, I can tell you this. Until we get to a point where our encounter with God produces genuine brokenness. Brokenness. Brokenness that brings you to a point where your obsession is to see Jesus revealed and see Jesus glorified. That is it. That becomes the anthem, the motto for your life. Why are you in business more than just making money? To see Jesus revealed, to see Jesus glorified. Why are you in ministry, dear man of God, more than wanting to show that God called me? That is an inferior reason to be in ministry. And I was taken to a valley that once had a great army. What happened? Could it be that if the army kept focus on the one who gave them life, they would not deteriorate to become bones? The first thing we see from these bones is there must have been rebellion from the life source. If the voice could bring them back, then it meant that voice was what would keep them alive. They lost touch with the voice. That's why they became bones. Oh, may I never get to a point where I make people believe that outside of God, by my will, I can bless and lift people. Joshua Selman does not have that power. Everything you see is derived from our relationship with God. Let's return back to the foundational truths. Otherwise, we are going to destroy our children and our children's children. They will not even know what they are called into. Please sit down. Can these bones live again? The answer is yes. If they pay attention to the voice that once gave them life. Can I be honest with you? There is a difference between pride, pride and confidence. Your confidence is acknowledging that which God has graciously made you become through Christ. And the Bible says, don't cast it away because it has a great recompense of reward. But there is pride. You know what pride is? Pride is coming to a point where you become vocal through your life and through your voice that there is no government above you. The moment you get to that point, the devil does not need to attack you. You are finished. The very justice system of God is what will judge you. Are we learning something tonight? Please hear me. Many of us, younger people in ministry, let me encourage you sincerely. Never fight the body, but be careful who you listen to. Many of us have listened to... And, and it doesn't have to be bad people. No. No. I can be a sincere person loving you with all my heart, but if I ask you to enter a car and I cannot drive, you and all your children and your wife and your entire family, sincerity may not take you to your destination. Amen. 
The absence of genuine encounters. Do you know, when God called me, and I'm sure that Apostle Felix will tell you, and many other people, when, God, when I started my work with God, SARS, it was never about ministry. I never even knew. Most of the people God is marvelously using today, ask them how many times they ran away from the call of God. They didn't want all that trouble. They said, Lord, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I just want to love you and to serve you. And God said, I have called you. But right now, please look at me. Look at me. I'm preaching to Africa. We need to return back to our passion. Ministry can become idolatry if God is out of it. Business can become idolatry if God is out of it. Genuine encounters with God. Gone are the days where people will lock themselves for one week and just say, Lord, I want to know you. I'm not looking for power for a conference. It is you I'm looking for. No. No. We didn't study our Bibles just because we were looking for sermons. No. No. We truly, genuinely, desperately wanted him. Let's go back and re-examine ourselves. He told Cain and Abel, he said, if you have done it right, will I not accept it? Society today is sadly a reflection of the carelessness and the nonchalance of the church. While we slept... Satan came in and planted all kinds of things. The question again is, can these bones live? You have heard it in my teachings. You celebrated me so graciously when I came. Thank God for your apostle, the man of God and his dear wife. Thank God for all the servants of God. But I want you to look at me. Behind this man you see, there is absolutely nothing out of the mercy of God. Listen, this is not an expression of weakness. When you make statements like this, you are very powerful. It was weakness that kills strength. When you see strength, beware, strength is not very strong. Weakness is what kills strength on the cross. When the anointing of the Spirit comes upon you and finds strength, it goes back. It must find you incapacitated in yourself that God becomes your completion. Listen to me. Let our altars and our pulpits once again become platforms for salvation. Let our messages once again, among the many things that we teach, do not teach as if sinners are no longer coming. It is good to mature and build people. But while you teach the different dimensions of the kingdom, still go back and remember, one sinner came to church today. Who needs to encounter Jesus? And if that sinner does not encounter Jesus, that will be the entrance point of evil in that church. They are the ones who tomorrow will be appointed positions because of longevity in the church without encounter. Please pay attention. Genuine encounter with the Lord. Number two, let me rush for sake of time. So three factors we're examining tonight that have been responsible for the current state of the church and by extension the nation as seen prophetically in the vision of Ezekiel. Number one, the absence of genuine encounter with the Lord. Number two, very quickly. Ready for number two? very low level of discipleship oh this is a concept you do not hear again in the body of christ younger believers don't even know what this is what is discipleship discipleship is the methodical approach a scriptural and methodical approach to growth and maturity as far as spiritual things are concerned the name, the doctrinal name given to the pathway that leads an individual who comes into Christ to now grow and have stature and maturity 
is discipleship. Discipleship is not a religious thing. People have made religion out of it, I understand. But intrinsically, discipleship is the methodical approach. Please look up. Did you know that the growth and the maturity of the saints was not supposed to be guesswork? Um, do we have any medical doctor here? Please stand, sir. Do we have any other medical doctor here? Any at all? Thank you. Did you by any means go to the same college of medicine with that lady? You're not sure. Now, how come both of you or all of you can accurately do the same thing, even though you've never met yourselves, because of the formula that was used to train you? You didn't have to know yourselves. That means the manual is greater than the lecturers that taught you. So, although you were from one region, and you were from one region, but both of you are called doctors, and you can actually meet for the first time in a surgery room and not doubt yourselves because of the dexterity of the manual that was used to train you. Now, please sit down. Sit down. Sit down. How come when I call a man Christian A, stand up. Christian B, stand up. Christian C, stand up. And all three come to sit down. You cannot even understand what they are discussing. So what is wrong? There must be, we have to probe into the manual that has been used for that training. Or we have to probe into the sincerity of the lecturer. Please sit down. Please pay attention. There is, listen, there is a cause content that is given for the maturity of the believers. And it is not an invention of any preacher. The cause content that has already been predefined to make any believer become mature, the name of that cause content is doctrine. Doctrine is the cause content allocated for the building and the maturity of the saints. Doctrine comes from the Latin word doctrina. It means a, a, a predefined body of knowledge that helps the students become something exact. Doctrina, a body of knowledge. Now, respectfully speaking, what happens... Now, remember, we agreed that all our teaching is not to point fingers. If you are pointing fingers at anybody, you are not part of us in this conference now. You have to understand. There is no tell them. We are all a family of faith. Very mature, very intelligent people who are, as one body, helping to solve what is wrong with that body. Please sit down. Are you learning? See, let me teach you something. The zenith of transformation is not enlightenment. It is love. We know you are most transformed not through the communication of knowledge alone. If your knowledge grows as your love depletes, it is not the Holy Spirit who is responsible for that building. Because if God builds you, the more you know, the more your love life rises to match your revelation so that you dispense the truths that you know from a standpoint of love the love factor is what validates that god taught you be learning all these things this is a conference discipleship second timothy chapter three my goodness wherever we stop tonight we'll share the grace and come tomorrow this is a school of the spirit. Second Timothy chapter 3 from verse 15. Very quickly if we can. Second Timothy. And that from a child. Everybody say child. So you are supposed to begin to learn the ways of God from a child. If you become an adult before you start, time is already against you. You have to create extra lessons to quickly because what you need to learn, you need to learn it on time. And that from a child, thou hast known the Holy Scripture. Are we together? Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Jesus Christ. To 17 now. All Scripture, he's still talking to that child, is given by God. 
by inspiration of God and is profitable for please talk to me for first doctrine before reproof there cannot be reproof and correction when there is no basis the basis is doctrine then from the lens of doctrine we can now adjust the excesses the excesses correcting the, this is why let me balance this oh dear we have other sessions let me not please pray for me that we just do you know maybe this may be a word from god to just help someone tonight not everybody has the grace to correct the body of christ just because you see things going wrong does not mean you just stand up and start talking correcting the body of christ is an office listen this is south africa do you just go as a citizen and arrest anybody for doing wrong there is an authorized system is that true license and when they come the first thing they show you is their license do you know what your license is there is a requisite level of love you must have for the body if not you will never be given the grace to correct that body you cannot correct the body from a standpoint of antagonism from a standpoint of bitterness your motive is already corrupted yourself hmm. Everybody say discipleship. Please shout it. Say discipleship. Do you know why the educational systems in most of our top universities globally work? Harvard, Yale, Oxford. Do you know why? Because they insist on maintaining standards of what is being taught. They have all kinds of quality control systems that they will not bend to. So you can trust the products that come out from there. The primary reason why the educational systems, respectfully speaking, in Africa continue to plunge is because there is no insistence on, there is no standardization. So all kinds of compromises can come. That is how it is spiritually. Can I be honest with you? When you understand doctrine, you see, the thing about spiritual growth and knowledge is that believers do, do not just learn anything spiritual to grow. There is a sequence. When a believer comes to Christ and gets born again, the next thing to teach that believer, doctrinally speaking, is not success. If you teach that person success from that standpoint, you have only given the flesh what to manifest. That person will most likely not last. That person needs to understand the rudiments of godliness, repentance from dead works, the power of character. Now, when you teach that person, by the time you come into the series on success, there is already a background. He knows. You have tamed the flesh. So... The teaching on success now comes to a matured believer who understands the purpose of influence, the purpose of wealth. We cannot randomly teach anything just because we find it from scripture. Look at me please. Again, let me use an example with our educational system. Assume with me for instance that you find a student in the university, in college. Today you run to the faculty of engineering for lecture. Tomorrow you run to the faculty of medicine or the college of medicine. Next tomorrow you go to art. Are you in the university? Yes. Will you graduate? Because your knowledge is not methodical. You are in the system, but you are not growing. When they award you a certificate or a degree, it's because you have stayed in keeping with the, the sequence of the growth across a field of study. They don't give you degree for everything. They give you degree for the field that you chose to stay on course for. Listen to me. Apostle Felix, if an average believer is called right now, at random, let's call an average believer who has been in church for say two years, three years, five years, and you stand here and we interview you based on the foundational doctrines of scripture, you will be surprised and even weep that the average believer does not even have an under... What do you know about prayer? What do you know about salvation? Can I get someone saved and hand him over to you and say, I will return back in two years. I should meet a general. I should meet a champion. Do you know how to... What is the next course? A 
Are we blessed? That's why after this conference, you should come to meet your man of God and hug him and say, Thank you, sir. Thank you for giving an opportunity for the body of Christ, not only in South Africa, but across. Can I be honest with you? Every national problem was first a regional problem. Every regional problem was first a community problem. Every community problem was first a family problem. Every family problem was first a problem that was not solved by the church, which is the light. Nothing starts at a national level. Everything only manifests at a national level. It is very easy to change a territory. You change a nation by changing regions, by changing communities, by changing families, by working on the church. Africa is about the most religious continent across the globe. Am I right on that? And can I be honest with you? The average church in Africa attends, has at least contacts with a spiritual leader once or twice every week. If what we are producing is not bringing glory to the name of the Lord, there must be an unashamed examination. Let's examine the cost content. Let's examine the state of the lecturer. First, there are other issues, but they are not as powerful as we make them. Satan knows this. And he will do anything to keep us arguing and fighting one another. Addressing the issues that are the obvious, but not the right ones. Doctrine. I've had the honor of praying for many institutions and many businesses and many companies. And for some of them, I see the dexterity around their administrative system. When I came in here, the excellence of your protocol, I saw all of the people, uh, uh, the wonderful, your, your, your whole reception team here. Do you know why these people are like that? They are trained. They didn't guess their way on what to do. Now, watch this. Everybody, please watch this. Please look up if you can find it. Who asked him to come? Who asked him to come and pick it? Why didn't you come? Do you not love your pastor? Why didn't you come? It's not your jurisdiction. You were trained. Are you seeing this now? Anytime there is no training, there will be disorder. I just threw this arbitrarily and he knows I put pressure on his office and his training. Now his ability to do this has proven that this man is a good shepherd. Please sit down. I was glad, thank you, when they said unto me, you see why it's really, this should be the basis of your confidence when you invite people to church. You invite them with this passion, knowing that just one service. You see that now? And you tell them, please come to the house of God. You will find wisdom there. Listen, the church should not be or look like a nuisance to civilization. No. The contents that we give are profitable always. It's not just the spiritual lives of the people. We communicate ideas that transform people and eventually help people to build the nation. The church is not just some spiritual nuisance. No. We are a blessing to everybody. We are the principal shapers of the spiritual convictions of any territory. So there is a serious discipleship problem. We must examine the things that we teach. Hebrews chapter 6 talks to us about the doctrinal pillars of the Christian faith. Doctrinal pillars. Six of them it lists. And then it says let us go on into perfection. Not laying again the foundation of doctrine, of baptisms, Laying on of hands, resurrection, eternal judgment, etc. Hallelujah. We must be methodically built. Number three, let me hurry up for time. What is the third factor 
that is responsible for the decadence of the church like prophetically seen in the vision of Ezekiel. Are you ready for this? Number three is that there are few models or references. Few models. In certain territories, there are almost no models. Few models or references that can inspire people and show people pragmatically how to be a Christian. Can I tell you this? Every territory strives to the degree to which they find models that reflect their aspirations. Business people excel because there are individuals who are seen as models. When a territory does not have models, men and women who have paid the price to become worthy references that you can draw from their lives the inspiration to continue, you can literally use their lives as a marking script to correct yourself as you move. The Bible says, Woe to a city whose king is a child. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12. The absence of worthy references and models. That ye be not slothful, but followers of them. Followers of them. So you follow him, but you can also follow them. When there is him and the them are not there, the people become confused. There must be worthy references. So that when you are talking about integrity, the Holy Spirit can use the image of an individual to help you and say, it is possible, keep moving, don't bend. That a man can prosper with the dignity of kingdom integrity and still move forward. When your life is, when you are prayerless, the Holy Ghost can use the face of someone. Question, how many models are in Africa that can be used? I'm not talking about blamelessness. I'm talking about the sincerity of pressed by the grace of God to become a reference. Longevity ministry does not make you a model. It is the dexterity of your track record. Are we together? Transformation is difficult when there are no references. Global leaders will tell you this. You can't change into nothing. There has to be a reference. For a long time, climbing Mount Everest was possible. But because there was no one who had done it, there was no model to create inspiration. Many people believed. And someone did it. And someone did it. Now you go and check the records. How many people have climbed? Many, many business people. Usually, when you find a territory that has one businessman that rises, becomes a global voice. Now he can become a reference. They can follow his footsteps. Can I tell you this? Until we find solid Christians in South Africa, in Africa, Christians indeed. There will be a very major problem. And if you have only one or two or three people... That reference is too small. You need many people. There is a reason why Jesus came and gathered 12 people. Gathered 72. Gathered 120. He said, I am making you witnesses. Who is a witness? A witness is a validator of a claim. You do not need a witness until there is a contention over that claim. It's amazing that in Ezekiel 37, as I attempt to round up for tonight, when God said, can these bones live? The prophet said, only thou knowest. And he said, prophet, if I speak alone, even though the bones are hearing me, they will not come. I need you. Repeat what I have said. I am God, but I designed a system that as far as it has to do with the earth, there must be a man who will echo what I am saying. And he said unto me, 
The Bible did not say, and he said. He said unto someone. This is what I desire, but I need you to make it happen. Prophesy. So this is one of the strategies for the restoration of decadence. The power of words and the power of information. The Bible tells us that in this kingdom, men live through food and words. Food and words. Prophesy to these bones. And say unto them, O ye dry bones. Don't lie about it. If they are dry, tell them they are dry. You will come back to life. But first, admit you are dry bones. And then he says, O ye dry bones, I have diagnosed your condition, but there is hope. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. Church of the Lord Jesus Christ, can I tell you this? In the midst of all the things that are happening in the body of Christ, in the midst of all that we see across Africa and society, let me bring you a word of comfort. Do not make a mistake of believing that the church is dead or finished. No. I can tell you there is a formula, there is a strategy that can bring that dead church back to life. South Africa, hear me. The church in this nation and the church across Africa is in a very defining moment. There are all kinds of shifts happening, but find rest. Jesus is still the builder of the church. So a day can come we will teach our children and our children's children and tell them once upon a time there was a period of decline. But hallelujah, Jesus, the Lord of the church, that one day our children will be able to go to schools and learn the things that are consistent with not just educational standards but faith. That one day, a day will come, church of the Lord Jesus Christ, where... It won't really matter which church you go to in South Africa. The same fire. The same salvation. That one day, men of God can see themselves and sit down and say you are a brother indeed. Because we would have laid aside all of these attributes of the flesh. And God would have walked and built us. You ask about the next move of God. He's asking you, can these bones leave? Can these bones leave? Please hear me. In the book of Jonah chapter 1, the first two or three verses talk about God giving Jonah an instruction to go to Nineveh. Jonah was so hot and angry, he ran away until he entered into the belly of the fish. Are we together? When he came out in repentance and brokenness, chapter 3 from verse 1, the word of the Lord came to him again. Please give us Jonah 3 and verse 1. The word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time saying, Arise. Go to Africa. That great city. God still calls a place that needs repentance a great city. Oh, come on. Someone did not see a prophetic word there. Africa. I know we have gone through a lot. Yes, sir. Politically. Economically. Spiritually. I know you may have been disappointed in we the men of God here and there. But can I tell you, Hear what the Lord still calls Africa. That great continent. That great nation, South Africa. Now you understand why I started the way I started. If he says it, he will do it. So if he has called Africa the great nation, I want to tell you this. Africa will arise again. But what is the call? I'm wrapping up. 
Ephesians 5 14. Three quick verses. I want to do something prophetic tonight. Now, please pay attention. I'm going to read these three verses prophetically. Um, I saw Colin, he's the one I know. That my man, where is he? He's gone. Yes. You will do me something here when I read these three verses. Please permit my bias. But I want you to sing for me the national anthem of South Africa. <laughs> Hallelujah. Prophetically, it's a chauffeur to the realm of the spirit. That from house of treasures, there are bones. Did he not say, as when I prophesied, I heard a sound? Can I tell you this? The blood of many have gone for the gospel. Many today have died. Some of you in ministry do not even know the history of the move of God within your region. It didn't come at a platter of gold. Go and study church history. People cried. They lost their lives. Missionaries came. Some died. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 14. South Africa, hear the prophetic word. Ministries, business people. Hear what the Lord is saying. Wherefore he saith, It is true that you want to see the next move of God. It is true that the bones can live, but not under any condition. Here is what God is asking you to do. Man of God, businessman, politician, awake thou that sleepest. Awake from that spiritual slumber. Don't give excuses. You will not birth glory that way. Awake. Awake. Some of you need to go back to ministry 101. Some of you need to go back to Christianity 101. And say, honestly, I've not gotten this thing right. I need to make it right. Second scripture. Very quickly. First Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30. First Samuel. Very quickly. We're out of time. First Samuel chapter 2. And verse 30, 3, 0, 2 and verse 30. First Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30. Wherefore, the Lord God of Israel said, I said indeed that my house and the house of my father should walk before me forever. But now, the Lord said, be it far from me. Listen, South Africa, another word for you from the Lord. For them that honor me, I will honor and they that despise me go and read through history any region individual nation continent that ever despises god is a matter of time for you are god alone from before time began you are on your throne you are god alone you are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. You one more time. You are God, say you are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. Second Chronicles chapter seven. Popular scripture that has been used by revivalists from verse 13. Second Chronicles chapter 7 from verse 13 and 14. Second Chronicles 7. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locust to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. Next verse. Please read with me in concert. Ready? Read. If. Hold on. He's talking to his people. This instruction is not to strangers. They are his people. If my people, which are called by my name, Number one, we are looking at the protocol for restoration. Number one, 
they shall humble themselves lord i accept as an individual i do not know you i accept the mistakes that i've made as a parent as a pastor as a leader there is one thing i know about god you can use brokenness to attract the attention of god for as long as we continue to act like a people who know what we are doing even in the midst of our confusion god will leave us to continue in our pride he looks for people who are genuinely broken i don't know about you but i have learned to come unashamed before god when i come before him i don't come as apostle joshua selman that's nonsense your boy is still here the one you lifted the one you took from nothing oh god i am still here thank god for the applause of kings and nobles but may i ever remain that child before you god is speaking to someone here we are wrapping up humble themselves please give us that scripture number two and pray what kind of prayer do you think you will pray in this occasion prayer of genuine repentance not some prideful prayer and saying, God, I'm putting my hand in my pocket as your colleague. I have been waiting for you. No, sir. Brokenness. I don't mean to be sarcastic, but I'm showing you a formula. Bones, if you will come back, you must be willing to listen again. It was your lack of listening that depleted you. The prodigal son, for as long as he was under the influence of his father's voice, he experienced so much when he left and there was no more voice he depleted till he began to feed with swine let's finish up and seek my face more than money i believe in prosperity oh. don't confuse what i'm teaching now i believe in prosperity and its ability to help to give you a life of comfort and to advance the purposes of god but I love you more than it. Oh, they don't know what you mean to me. They don't know what you mean to me. How could I exalt money more than him? How could I exalt ministry more than him? Where were these things when the devil was almost destroying me? Can I listen god is speaking to us tonight some of you this may be the reason why you have not seen the power and the grace of god you love him but how much simon but jonah lovest thou me more than this please let's finish up and turn from your wicked ways if you pray and don't turn you are still a sinner the prodigal son said how he came to himself africa let's come to ourselves if we want to fulfill that prophetic word of being that continent that will return christ back i'm speaking to world over the world but please permit my bias passionately communicating this to our dear continent africa was now feeding with swine and Africa said, oh, I come to myself. He said, how many hired servants does my father have? And I am here today feeding with swine. I will arise. I cannot change myself, but I can go to where change will happen. I may not be able to save myself, but I can come to church. I may not have the power to drive those demons, but I can come to a man of God who has been graced. He said, I will arise and I will go back to my father. I'm showing you repentance. Repentance requires action. And I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. I am not worthy to be called your son. Take me as one of your servants. And the moment he was leaving his place of decadence, the father too was leaving his house. They met somewhere on the way. Can I tell you this? The greatness you are looking for is also looking for you. But he's not looking for the rebel. 
that is at that place is looking for the one on his way back businessman hear me you have tried everything you know to do it's a spiritual problem it's not just a financial problem you have too many friends who would have brought you out there is a hand that you are against then i will hear from heaven and i will forgive their sin and i will heal their land south africa please stand africa malu minutes Lord we repent of our pride we repent of our lusts we repent of our hypocrisy we repent from putting our strength in ourselves trust in the Lord with all your hearts the Bible says and lean not on your own understanding he says in all your ways acknowledge him Lord, we repent from the pulpits to the pew. We repent from our places of parliament, even to the marketplace. We repent from our homes. As a continent, we cry upon you for mercy again. You have asked us a question tonight. Son of man, can Africa live again? Can South Africa live again? Can the nations in Africa live again? And indeed, we say, only thou knowest. But by the authority of Scripture, we turn that question into a prayer. And everyone begin to pray that prayer now. Africa, leave again. South Africa, leave again. Nigeria, leave again. Zimbabwe, leave again. Malawi, leave again. Is someone prophesying? We are declaring, leave again, leave again, out of the ashes of our decadence, leave again. The church is praying, leave again.
putting aside our denominational barriers. We come as a people who love Jesus. And we speak all dry bones. Leave again. Leave again. In politics, leave again. In business, leave again. Economically, leave again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let our children begin to call upon the name of the Lord again. Hallelujah. And Adam knew his wife again. And she bore him set. And men began to call upon the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Cry before him. Cry before him. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now please listen carefully. Apologize for the stretch. But the last thing I'm going to do here tonight. There are people scattered inside. And probably the other halls that have been put. We cannot end this conference without giving you room to make it genuinely right with Jesus. More than a church goer. More than a bearer, please stand if you can, of Christian names. I apologize for the stretch, but this is the protocol that restores the ark. If it is God we desire to see again in our land. Now, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. All those who are not within this auditorium, when the altar call is made, please officials, if you can just show them somewhere they can stand, so we still respect the principles um, as far as um, gatherings and all of that is concerned. But for those who are in this hall, hearing me preach, you're saying, Apostle, I need Jesus desperately as a matter of life and death. Christianity is nothing without Him. Or you are here and you are saying, I remember giving my life to Jesus, but sincerely my life has gone haywire. And right now I do not even know what I stand for. I need restoration and revival. These two groups of people, without having to bump on yourselves, please come gently. And I want you to come and stand at the aisles here. I'm going to count one to five. Please do that quickly. If you are still thinking about it, sit down on your seat. But if you are here and you mean it sincerely, please don't pretend this is Jesus. Some of you are crying. One, please come to Jesus. Please come to Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. I'm going to hold the hands of your man of God. And we're going to be praying for you. You don't have to kneel for for space. Listen, Jesus said this. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Some of you are crying. You are before him, Jesus. (laughs) The one who can save to the uttermost. In your salvation is the salvation of your children. In your salvation. He says, for this promise is unto you. And your children and your children's children. As many as are far off, even those that the Lord Himself will call. Those of you who are in front, please lift your right hand high to the heavens. And I want you to say this after me. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe believe that you died for me. me. 
I believe, I believe that you rose again, that you rose again for, my justification. for my justification. Tonight, Tonight I, receive you I receive you as my Lord, as my, Lord my, Savior, my Savior, and my King. And my King. I, receive I receive eternal life, eternal life into my spirit. Into my spirit. I receive, I receive the abundance of grace, the, abundance of grace, the gift of righteousness, gift of righteousness and, I declare, and I declare that I reign, that I reign with, Christ. with Christ from today, from today until, forever, until forever. I am a child of God. I'm a child of God. No, going back. no going back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please keep those hands lifted. Your pastor, your apostle, the shepherd, and your father. Is going to make a declaration over you and when he makes that declaration if there is a place you go to that's fine otherwise I'm sure that there will be a group of counselors or maybe a card given to you or if there is no provision like that whenever we call for those who have made this altar call please do avail yourself so that there will be a group of people who can follow you up praise the Lord Amen. Heavenly Father we just want to thank you Thank you for each and every one of these souls. Father, the scripture says there is a rejoicing in heaven mm. over the salvation of one soul. Therefore, Father, we thank you for this great harvest. Father, upon their confession in our Lord Jesus, in the resurrection, and Father, we now declare as a church, the scripture says, whosoever sins will remit is remitted. We declare therefore that their sins are forgiven. The grace that brought them out here will preserve them in the kingdom. And Father, we decree that unto the coming of our Lord Jesus, everyone here will make it to heaven. We destroy every curse in your life. And I speak the blessing of Abraham into your spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, we declare you blessed. In Jesus' precious name. And everybody say, Amen. Now quickly, you are just going to follow. There is a lady right there. Please follow them. We just need to take your name and your phone number so we can keep in touch with you to help you maintain this decision. What a great harvest of soul. We celebrate all of you. Please, can you just follow them quickly? Just follow them. It's just going to be a short while. Follow them and you'll be back into the service. You, they will give you an, uh, an information form. Fill it out quickly. Please help them. Help them. Please fill it out quickly. Help them. Help them. Some people can go through this way. Can somebody direct them this way? Please don't go back to your seats. Just follow them. Obey instruction. So you can write down your names and your phone number. And we'll be able to follow up with you and help you to maintain this decision. Please, church, one more time, give them a clap offering. Let's celebrate them. Hallelujah. Now, before I take my seat, I understand there is this. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.